right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Tuesday. It's that time of week again. Here we are together. It's great to see your faces. Thank you so much for joining us and getting on tonight. Whew. It's mid it's mid August. I almost said October. That's because I'm ready for fall. I was Halloween decor shopping this morning. And so oh. I am I am in full swing ready for Halloween. And uh I'm really trying to hold off from it. Have any of you been to Costco recently and you've seen that big skeleton that looks like he's coming out of the ground? You know which one I'm talking about. He was really popular last year and sold out really quick. And now this year everybody's carrying him. Anyway, I've been on the fence. I've been on the fence and I want it. But cool. Anyhow, because I think he'd look really cool sitting on the edge of the pool, looking like he's coming out of the pool. I think that would be really fun. But my son is, he's going through a phase where Halloween, he wishes Halloween was removed from the holiday calendar. He, um, he's not happy about it. And so he's oh. not happy about Halloween this year. So anyway, so it's kind of a double edge. He keeps. Is it because he, he's scared? Yeah. He's scared, but he's, it, it, he's scared, but then he's not scared, but he's scared. He won't even go into the garage to get a drink out of the refrigerator in the garage because that's where the skeletons for Halloween are stored. Stored. Uh, they're not up. They're oh, not, but that's baby. where they're stored. So he's like in that mode where he's just like, no, I'm not going to get my own drink. The skeletons are out there. So I don't know. He keeps... Uh, mean anyway, I could talk about this all night and fill all of our time, and I won't do that. So, anyhow, we learned sigils to draw in the snow and in the dirt around our house because little man was so freaked out about zombies one year. Uh, like Googled up runes, well, to to draw. To let me tell you, this is mind. also this is also a kid that has a bottle of Scentsy Fresh in his room, and it's called Monster Spray, and the Scentsy Fresh is sprayed under his bed for to keep the monsters away so yeah anyhow um okay so it's mid-august even though i said almost october or i said october, anyhow um one big announcement to call your attention to is that beetlejuice if you didn't see the news article beetlejuice has been pushed out a little bit we don't know yet as to when, unless they announced a date in the last couple hours. Um, but right now, Beetlejuice was slated for August 19th. It is now to be determined, TBD. Um, we are waiting for an update on that. So that is not launching August 19th. The Gordy, Gordy Collection, Gordy Goodness, Gordy Good, Gordy, the fall, the early fall bars um, launched yesterday. So those are available now. Um, and I think that's really it for news at the moment. That's super important news. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, you got that. What else? So here's what we decided tonight. We decided that we've been coming at you for, gosh, weeks and weeks and weeks with Lots of really great information on Tuesday nights. We always have a topic and a, a plan and either a guest speaker or something. And we, we were like, you know, we haven't given in a while an opportunity for the audience to ask in or come get questions that they want to know answers to live uh, without having to post it in the team page and wait for somebody to respond. We wanted to give you guys the opportunity to bring your questions, bring what you want to know, or it could be about anything. So this is kind of an any topic, you know, who knows where it'll take us, who knows what direction we'll go in. And typically on calls like this, everybody leaves learning something because you just never know what we're going to talk about. So um, Anna's managing the chat. So you can drop a, uh, drop any questions or anything that you want answered into the chat. And we'll kind of go through those. Um, there is no dumb or silly question except for the ones that you don't ask. And um, yeah, if you're wondering it, probably somebody is too. So you can ask anything. One of the things we're going to start off with really quickly, only because this came up today and and it's a good place to start, is um, Tammy was showing me something that she's including in orders this 
uh, she, her postcards just came in and I said, those are really cute. And that would be a really cool thing to show people just because that's one of the questions that we get asked all the time is what do you give your customers when you are giving them their order or their purchase or, you know, whatever. And so it's always fun to see what people are using and what, what they're, what they're giving. So Tammy, do you want to show what you show and show and tell about your postcards? Um, I can't take credit for it because it's actually Rachel Pence actually had put this together. I just changed the wording of it. Um, and so it's basically a postcard that will go in. I do a lot of events as well as people come and pick up things here. So it's a thank you and basically telling them what it's what I'm working towards. Um, and then on the back, it has, you know, things that they can do to help us uh, get to get us on the ship. And so I had these printed for the first time using Avery. I usually have some other places that I print, but they were a really good price. And so I was unsure of how they were gonna come out, um, but they're really good quality if you've never used um, Avery, um, that may be something to look into. Um, and then I always put a Sensi Club one um, front and back um, that went in there. In addition, um, this year when I, sent out my catalogs. I also put a little thing that basically just says, you know, I have um, big goals this fall and I'm ready to reward you for your help. And then ways that they can help by partying, joining, hosting, uh, fundraisers, et cetera. So those are kind of the little things that I put in there as well as the discontinued um, flyer for things that are going away August 31st. So they could take advantage of it. And also it allowed me to pay postage for one thing and hit multiple things. I want them to order for August, but um, put it in the club and then pre be prepared for the fall. So just a few things that I put in there. So awesome. Yep. Thank you, Tam. Uh, I scrolled up in the chat and missed giving a shout out to Melissa Brown. This is her very first Zoom. Um, she uh so excited that she's with us so congratulations holly and melissa and um okay then and i know you're compiling or looking i'm kind of scrolling the the chat to see where we're what direction we're going in i am and i answered a quick question so for those of you who can't see the chat we had a question from wendy about how scent circles are going to be packaged for the next catalog season because we had talked about how we're um moving from single scent circles where right now you buy a six pack of scent circles and you pick six different scents that's not going to be an option next season we'd be buying scent circles in two three packs or single three packs so you could get three clean breeze and a three black raspberry vanilla and you're going to pay $30 for two three packs or just a single three pack for $10. So um, the question was about how they're going to be packaged. And so I think that long term, they're looking at changing that packaging in order to include all three. But for now, the packaging won't change. It's just the manner in which we order them. So uh, you're not going to be worrying about getting a single clean breeze scent circle that you can attach to an order. I know a lot of us like to do that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. the only thing that's going to change really is the pricing and how we order them. So we'll have to change the, the way that we do some fundraisers and things like that, but you'll still have them available to you for your custom orders. Perfect. Thanks, Anna. Yeah. So what yep. do you, do you want to real quickly talk about how to do a QR code since that will only take like a minute? Yeah, go for it. No, I was, no, I said you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's, there are so many different ways to create QR codes anymore. It used to be that you had to have some kind of special app or some download something. Now there are so many different free QR code generators um, online. If you use Google Chrome as your browser, <clears throat> Google Chrome will create a QR code right in the browser for you. Um, it's in the settings or in the, the menu if you're on any given web page. So let's say you wanted a QR code of your PWS, then you use Google Chrome, go to your PWS, go into settings, and it will say create QR code. And it will create a QR code for whatever web page that you are on. If you don't use Google Chrome and maybe you are you use Canva or you're new to using Canva and you've been playing around with it, Canva creates 
uh, QR codes. All you have to do is search QR code in Canva and the QR code creator little app part of Canva will pop up. Or you can use, Anna uses and swears by an app called Crafter. Yep, is that Q, it's like, like the word crafter, like you like to craft, but instead of with a C, it's a Q, Q-R-A-F-T-E-R, crafter. It's and that's perfect. free. That's mm -hmm. a free app that yep. you can download and that'll create QR codes for you. Um, you can also Google free QR code generator. However, you do have to just, and I don't want to, I don't want to scare anybody or steer anybody away from creating QR codes, but just be try to pick something that's repu reputable to to use because some sites will tell you, oh yeah, you can create this for free, but then they make it expire after like 30 days or something. And so you don't want to print a QR code from one of those types of sites or apps um, and put it on everything to only to find out it only works for like 30 days. That is oh. not the case with Google Chrome. That's not the case with Canva. That's not the case with Crafter. Um, so you, you kind of want to stay to, and I know it's sometimes it's hard to figure out what's legitimate and what isn't, but you, first of all, uh, there, I guess there's two things to know. One, you don't have to pay anywhere. Not there. Don't let anybody charge you a fee or charge you to create a QR code because you don't. If you, I learned if you have, is this true? If you have an Android phone, you can create a QR code right from the Android phone. Does anybody know that? Katrina's shaking her head. Yes, I think the iPhone doesn't have that fun option, but I think that yeah, you're cooler than your iPhone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, you're, are you confirming, Melissa, that it does do it? Yeah. Yes, it does do it. Okay. So there's yeah. there's a couple different different options, and you can always, I don't know. I would say I would say Crafter, if if no other, if for no other reason or whatever, that's an app that you can download. It's free, and we know it's legit, and so. You can do that. If the other options don't work for you, Canva and Google Chrome. All right. Where are we going to next, Anna? Okay. Next question. Um, so Laura Hedrick had a question about vendor events and said, how at vendor events, how do you determine who's really interested to give promo materials to? I can afford to make maybe a hundred, but we're expecting like 5,000 people. So this isn't to sell, but to get the name of businesses known to the new people in town. It's heavily college freshmen, but community members too. So I can totally understand that. You, you, the things that we hand out can be expensive if you're trying to uh, supply for that many people. So it may not be mo uh, so much about handing out the things, but um, a, a system in which you can just collect contact information. So things like raffles are really helpful too. Melissa, I know you do way more events than I do. You want to speak on that? Yeah. I, and and Tammy, you jump in and anybody have. Uh, Anybody else that does events, please, so that it's not everybody having to listen to me all the time. Um, but I would say I, my rule of thumb is always I pass things out to the people I speak to. I'm not I'm not somebody that just stands at the corner of my booth and just shoves things at people, because when you do that, nine point five times out of ten, they're setting it down two booths down from yours. So I'm not that person. But if I'm if I connect with somebody, then I give them information. If I speak to them, if we have an exchange or a conversation, Tammy's agreeing with me. Um, and so that does really cut down on how much you're actually going to go through. And if you do run out, that means you made you had at least 100 conversations or talked to at least 100 people. So you can look at it that way. Um, but I'm not a just pass out to the masses because, and when I do, I will say this, and then you guys can jump in. Um, when I am passing out samples at events, like little samples. So I have always done like samples attached to my business card when I do events. Um, and when I say it's a scent sample, it's literally like this big just to make the card smell good. When I pass those samples out to people, I will say to them, 
nine times out of 10 and passing it out to a woman, um, I'll say, here, tuck this in your purse and it'll make your purse smell good because I want to watch them put it somewhere. I don't want them walking out of my booth with it in their hand because then they are going to set it down somewhere else. I want to make sure it goes home with them. So I will always say, tuck this in your purse. It'll make your purse smell good. And then later you'll think of me or something funny like that, depending on the person. But um, so, yeah, that's another little tip, too, is I want to make sure that that goes home with them. OK, who else? A any of our other event doers? Tammy, how are you collecting uh, customer information as far as contacts? Say so that I stepped away for just a minute. How, how are you collecting contacts at an event or how are you deciding who to hand things out to at an event? I kind of do the same thing as Melissa. It's conversation. It's conversation based um, at a big event. I usually only put the, um, not the showcase brochures, but the little flyers in the front. So if they walk by and they grab something, it's not so as expensive. I only give catalogs to those that really ask for it um, because they show like a true interest in it. Um, as far as how I grab information is I use the simple raffle form, or if they're ordering something from me, I actually have them fill at the top of the order form and basically tell them by filling that out, they're also entered. So they don't have to fill out a raffle form twice. Um, and so, or if it's just a casual conversation and they don't want to fill out either of those, I mentioned it before I use hi, hello, we exchange that information. So they at least have my information that they can plug into their phone. Uh, so sh she elaborated on that uh, event topic. It's going to be 100 degrees that night. Any tips to stay cool at an event? Bring a I mean, I'm, on, I'm coastal Washington, not an issue over here. So I'll defer that to you guys living in the Midwest or in the South. Bring, bring a fan. I've done many 100 degree <laughs> events outside. And if that's the case and you have wax on hand, keep coolers with ice packs, keep the wax in there. Um, you know, try to keep the bars in the shade if you have bars at the event, but, um, but yeah, a fan it's, there's no, there's, there's no secret sauce to outdoor events in the heat. So, um, okay. Where are we going okay. next? We'll move on to the next thing. Okay. Um, we had a question about happy mail. Do you do happy mail? I want to do happy mail. What are you doing for happy mail? Brandy what, Moore's holding up an envelope. What does that look like in your business? It just I never hold things up. <laughs> so I'm doing two this month because it's transition month. So I'm getting ready to send one out this week. So I'll show you that one. And then I'll show you the one that I'm going to send out the last week in August. And I'm getting a late start because I decided to take a three week vacation. So I did little party bags that say be a smarty and book a party and literally stuffed them just like they're a party bag from a kid's show. I have one cent circle. The spatula, a catalog. Um, well, this time it'll be a product sheet because I don't have any more spring summer catalogs. And then a host join brochure and an order form. And then my other one, I got um, an idea from Tammy Pope, my upline, and she did a newsletter, which is also going out in the first round. And then the second round I dedicated to here are my goals I'm working towards. And then it also tells you how you can help me. So my goals, how you can help me, pictures of my goals. And then it also has the 10 new cents on the stickers and a host, uh, harvest. No, scent of the month, that's the scent of the month. That's all I'm sending out this month. Quick, simple, and easy. And the candy is, I literally just go to the Dollar Tree and stock up on the candy. 
I love the way that Laura said, she said that it doesn't have to be a lot to remind them that they like Sensi. No. Remind most them that months, they like Sensi. That's good. <laughs> yep. Most months it'll be small like this, but two times a year I'll do the bigger one. Okay. Um, I was going to say, and I have a, something that's easy too that I found yeah. um, is I try to do these um, at the beginning of the catalog season of the new catalogs that are coming out, but I use the this size. I think they're like the four and a quarter by whatever they come uh, perforated um, four to a sheet. And then I tend to find like, I know there was like a recipe for like mocha doodles, like cookies. Um, and then I'll either, depending on what your budget is for my customers that order over a certain amount, I might order a bunch of mocha doodle, you know, at the time scent circles or make a sample of it, or even a bar that goes with it. But I kind of find recipes that go with our scents and provide a recipe with it. And on the backside, a message that I say, thank you. And I send those out. So um, so whether it's just a small sample of that fragrance, I put it with a recipe um, and then a handwritten note as a thank you. I wanted to share something real quick, what I do every month, because it's one stamp. So I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, oh, you spotlighted me. I was like, oh my gosh, where'd everybody go? I, I used a scent circle and I tore off the back. Somebody on here talked about that. But the brochures that we get with the scent and warmer of the month and just a regular envelope and a business card, and that's one stamp. Mm -hmm. And it's really simple. Oh, and I also put the fragranced sticker on top of that part of here. So when they open it, it's a uh, good smelling mail. And all of my customers, like I've, they've been reaching out saying like how I made their day and it's a, it's one stamp. Nice. Thanks, Jack. There uh, is a question in here about hostesses or hosting. Uh, right now I have three parties. Two of the hosts are not even replying to me. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So my question is, does anyone have a packet to help with hostess? And uh, Cindy so sweetly put, put a Canva link within the chat for a host packet, which is amazing. That's an awesome, awesome resource. And I just wanted to add something to that. And, and my big advice as far as determining what your hosts want, if, if, if they're hosting for you, they want something specific out of this with their rewards, right? They wouldn't be hosting for you if they didn't want any sensi. So figuring out what it is that they want. Do they want a specific warmer? Are they just crazy about fragrance flowers? Is, is it, do they want more wax? If you know what they want, you can kind of determine about how much they're going to need to get as far as their rewards go. And they're a little more invested in making sure that their party is a success. So I like my hosts to make a wish list. If they don't have a wish list, then they're just kind of there to ride it out. So give them a reason to help their, their own party to be successful. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any tips on helping their hosts be more engaged? Well, and I always say it's, it's sometimes it's hard to answer this question as a one size fits all because how you got to this person to host is different across the board. If I, I, um, if you just gave this person a shopping link and we're like, here, have people shop from this, you're essentially hosting a party and they're not very receptive. That could be that they just don't necessarily understand what they're supposed to be doing. As opposed to you have somebody that approaches you and says, I want to host a party and then they're not responding. So it kind of just depends on, you have to take a look at how you got these hostesses, how you got them to having the party and then figure out, and Patty, you're raising your hand, but kind of figuring out how, it's not a one size fits all answer. So Patty, what do you want to say? Um, part of the thing I like to say is it's kind of almost like a tennis match. So making sure you tell them that they really do need to participate and they're going to get, they know, they know their friends list. You don't sometimes. And so they need to make sure that they're doing a video or they're sharing the product or they're interacting with their friends and tagging them because you can say all the things, but if they're not playing tennis and they're not a team player with you, it does make it really hard. So um, 
I, I always just go in and say this, we both have to do this together. So this is what I'd like you to do on this day and this day. And you will learn real quick if they do what you say or don't do what you say. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to figure out how you can either message the people or take up the slack or um, try a, a fun game or look like a complete you know fool because that'll get some reactions or whatever. But um, it is a team effort, you and the host. And so making sure you have the conversation. What is she working for? What's her goal? Like, does she want a diffuser? Does she want an air purifier? Well, it's good to tell people what her goal is and and tell her exactly what she'll need. And then making sure that she knows as she goes along how much she's going and, you know, give her ideas and um, to talk to people one-on-one -on -one and not just bulk, inter like check everybody off on your friends list or bulk invite on, you know, things like that. People want to feel special and seen and, and they don't want to seem like, ah, oh, she just, she just invited everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm not special. So yeah. that's just my two cents worth. Uh, thanks, Patty. That's, I, I couldn't agree more with that. Very, very good advice. Um, uh, the, the chat is getting crazy. Just so you know, I'm, uh, okay. If you want to continue on with this, I I am doing my just so all yeah. of you know, I'm, I'm doing my best to keep all of your questions. I'm, I'm scrolling and looking too. So we've got Kim's question from above about onboarding. Yes. So I've we've we've set that one aside for just a second. Um Sarah's question came in. Sarah and both her and Minta are asking about um fundraisers can, can, so sarah is new to sensi and so she may have missed she probably did miss since she's asking this the video that you did anna about talking about fundraisers does that video answer some of her questions um not not really and that's why i okay why I my quite my answer to her was more about whether or not she had been to YouTube yet, just because the whole process, the whole process of fundraising is something we could literally spend the entire hour talking on. Um, but in in short, if you're doing a fundraiser, Sensi is not doing the fundraiser, you are doing the fundraiser. So you are collecting money and orders like you would in a party setting or um, or people are collecting orders for, from you like as if they, they were doing a, a mobile party or basket party or bag party or whatever you want to call it. Other people are collecting the orders. They're collecting the money. On the due date, they turn in the orders and they turn in the money. You order all the products. And then you, when you get your commission, you give them your commission or whatever it was that you agreed upon as far as if you were giving 20% or 25% or a set number of dollars per whatever item that it is that you're selling. So that money is coming out of your pocket, not Sensi's. That's not Sensi. So the other people are collecting orders. They're collecting payment. They turn it in. You place the orders like you would for anything else. And then you'll distribute all of those orders back to whoever your participants were and they'll make sure that they take care of uh, delivering those orders. That's typically how people run it. And then you write your write a check out to that organization when your commissions come in. So I hope that that helps with that part of the, the question. Uh, but as far as prospecting, and we can give you some really great resources and videos on all of that, if this is still something that interests you. Sometimes when people hear that uh, that the money is going to be coming back out of their own pocket, they they eh, maybe that's not something I want to get into quite yet. And that's totally okay. This is just a really awesome tool for meeting new people. Really, that's a great, it's a really great way to meet people who are actively buying Sensi because they just bought Sensi with you. So you're going to have to follow up with them and they may decide that they'd like to get more Sensi, whether they're buying again or hosting, or maybe they end up joining your team. So it's a really great way to bring people in. So does you do end up giving your commissions away, but it has its benefits too. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Jody Herring, can you, are you still here? I can looking for you. I'm here. Can you give a two second, here's how it works if you wanted to do a buddy drive, just to give people like a Cliff Notes version on how that works? Sure. Um, first, I mean, you have to know who you're doing the buddy drive for, and you want to make sure you're having permission. Um, mine is for my son's school. That's where it started. And 
it's grown since because I have another friend that does an organization like with autism kids. So I asked permission with her and it's just grown. Um, and I just asked my, my friends, customers, family members to donate. I created a flyer and I added photos because as I've done them, I've gotten permission with, you know, photos and I've added that. So it's personable and I share that. And I've asked my friends, family, whoever to share that. And so it's just grown. This is the sixth year that I'm doing it. So and it, it, it's a slow process. Like this year, I haven't collected as much, but I just keep pushing. So like the first year I did it, um, well, originally I did it, it was eight students. It was just the start of my son's classroom. That's where it started. Eight students. I got enough donations for, I think, six kids and I did the rest. And then, then I asked for the whole school which was like 175 students. So, and I started with buddy clips. I think it was the buddy clip, or though it was the bitty buddies first. And then I did the buddy clips. And then I said, I'm doing full buddies from now on. And that's what I did. I've been really lucky. This past year it was like 325, I think, buddies I collected. So. Wow. And you're basically saying what? you. Mm -hmm. And you're basically saying yes, and we Ginger had, had over 200. So we had over 500 buddies for special needs uh, kids. Uh, so amazing. <laughs> yeah. So Jody, you're basically saying when you say like we have a flyer and we're asking friends and family, I think the one, the one piece that you left out is you're basically asking them, would you like to purchase a buddy to be given? It, 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 I mean, right. Yeah. Do you, would you purchase a buddy? Right. Cause I can, they can either give me their donation. So I order it for them or they can order and ship it to me or I could pick it up or whatever. But, um, it's asking for donations for buddies for special needs children. I mean, I'm telling them exactly what they're going towards yep. and I'm telling them as the, you know, time has gone on, I'm telling them the feeling behind it with me, my feeling, um, the students, the reaction I'm getting from the kids, the reaction I'm getting from the you know, the teachers, the staff, the parents, I'm getting all kinds of messages from them thanking me that it was my kid. These kids are able to make a choice. So I, you know, I set them up where they can make a choice to pick out which one they want. They don't get very many choices in life. And this is something they get to do and choose. So it's been really good. But yeah, it's you start small and just awesome. keep pushing. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. Um, Welcome. last piece on fundraisers is a couple people said, I'm not having any luck getting them. That doesn't mean you stop asking because you have to think like in my case, um, a lot of fundraising opportunities are once school's back in session and school's not back in session in Michigan yet. Right. And so you can't just be like, well, nobody wants to do a fundraiser right now. Well, no, because maybe marching band doesn't need a fundraiser right now, or maybe the baseball team isn't fundraising yet right now and so um like my daughter's girl scout troop wants to do a fundraiser but not in august they want to do it in january so it's just it just kind of depends tam what do you want to say to that what i was going to say is also sometimes we're wanting to talk to them right away but if you think of organizations that would be great you can actually send a letter that basically explains i have these opportunities so you're not directly talking to them or like you know sometimes when we put the posts out on Facebook, we don't get a response, but look at the organizations in your area that might benefit or would be a good choice and send the information, you know, create a letter that talks about that you do have this opportunity, how much they would earn and that you're more than willing to um, sit down with them. Um, Cause maybe they're not on your Facebook by you directly reaching out to the organization themselves, you may get a response too. So Thanks, Tim. All right, Anna, where are we going? Okay. Um, how are we finding in new hosts outside of our circle of friends or finding new customers, customers, hosts, contacts outside of our initial circle of friends? Because that's the one of the biggest things, right? In this business where people come in, they sell to their warm market, their their family, their friends, their coworkers, the people that they already know, that's your warm market. Um and then they get stuck when those people feel like they've ha they have enough sensi, which they're wrong. They never have enough sensi. But I digress. Yeah. How do we get past that warm market, right? And that's not. It's not so much in who you know in this business. It's in who they know. So the sooner that you step out of who you already know to meet new people, the better. 
And that's why the party plan system works so well, typically, is that you have someone host and they invite people that you don't already know. And at that party, you have somebody agree to host and then you meet that person's network of people again. So the perpetual party system, that's why we have something called the perpetual party reward. If you guys haven't seen that, when you go to close out orders, there is an additional half price item that you can access as a consultant. And the initial uh, purpose of that was so that way we could continue to book parties. So if I was at Melissa's party and uh, Tammy was there and Tammy says, I would like to host a party. Well, when Tammy has her party, Melissa would get that half priced item. So that's the concept behind that perpetual party reward, because that's what helps you build your network in the most uh, simple possible way. Of, of course, fundraisers help and events help, but it's, it's not so much in meeting... It is in meeting people that you don't know, but it's it's in meeting the the people of your people because there's a level of trust there when you have a mutual friend. But you want to add to that? How are you meeting new people? Debbie. <laughs> I I can literally find a way to bring up Sensi in, in any conversation. I was getting my teeth cleaned today and she's like, what'd you do this summer? And I was talking about Orlando. I'm like, oh, I earned the trip and I went to Mexico. And then I ended up giving my hygienist my card in the catalog when I left because she wants to order something. I can be in line at a grocery store and literally find a way to bring up Sensi. Sometimes I'll like spray my money with room spray. And then people like will oh. say something smells good. And then you tell like, or spray the inside of your purse. And um, I honestly, so secret, I wear Bath and Body Works spray like on myself and people tell me I smell good. I'm just like, oh, I smell scentsy. So I don't know what you're smelling, even though it's not scentsy. They don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do smell scentsy on me in my purse and stuff, but I don't know <laughs> what they're smelling, but that doesn't hurt. I don't know. Um, but just there's, there's always That's a way good. to bring up scentsy. I love that. Thank you, Debbie. Yeah, super, super helpful. Anybody yeah. else? When um, I'm in a Mary drive Jean. through Oh, yeah. sorry. No, Jackie, sorry. go. And then yeah. Mary Jean, you're queen of meeting new people all the time. I was going to say, uh, to uh, piggyback with Debbie, I also spray my car right before I go to the drive through window. So then when they open theirs and I roll my window down, they're like, oh, my God, what's that smell? And I'm like, oh, you can smell something? Oh, it's got to be my Scentsy. I sell it. Same thing, hand them a car bar, hand them a scent circle, a business card, you know. Yeah, I love this. Uh, uh, Debbie or um, Patty Wonder had something similar to that as far as, uh, you know, follow your money. Like you were talking about being in a drive through, but she said, stop going through the drive through, go inside to pay, have conversations at restaurants, meet up app groups, like wherever you're going, don't be sensey naked. I always um, try to, whatever I'm getting ready to do, Sensi is a modem behind it, no matter what. This summer, I've had one to two pool parties for my granddaughter twice a week. That's a lot. And my goal is I'm meeting these people at school, the grandmothers or the mothers that are taking and picking up. And they said, we really need to stay in contact. I would like to invite you. So I got like six ladies phone numbers. So three of them or four of them now have already bought from me. So they come over and I say here, you know, and we all kind of bring a dish and pass, but they have to stay. So of course, all of my wax has changed. You know, they're changing in the bathroom. It's fresh wax. That's everything. And all the lights are out, but just the Scentsy lights are on. They go, oh, that's so pretty. What is that? I know oh, that's Scentsy. And I've got catalogs laying there. So then... I just kind of bring it up like I have a warmer outside and they'll say, oh, well, is that sensei? I said, yeah, let me just show you what it is. I ran in and I got the testers, you know, the, the new ones. And I said, I know some of you guys already know about them, but these are the new ones. I'm just going to lay them here for a minute. So if anybody wants to smell. So now they're all smelling them. So I said, okay, now I need this just for my, ca my camera, you guys. Handed them all a book. Said, so open up the books and really get into this because I'm taking pictures and I need this for my portfolio. And they go, 
oh, okay. And now they're looking at it and I did both. I said, when a pool party turns into a sensi party. And they looked, They and then they got up and they're starting to look in my studio where I have things displayed and they were buying. So and that opportunity was there ever since I started planning the pool parties for my granddaughter. So I, like I said, I just, there's something behind it always that I'm thinking. The next step is they're going to be incorporated to my bingos now, my monthly bingos. I love that. Um, Patty, can I just call on you? <laughs> Since uh, there's a thing, she had some good stuff in the chat and I know that anybody who's watching the recording back is not going to be able to see the chat. So, um, can you reiterate that you also have had to rebuild your business in multiple locations, not knowing anyone. So, yeah, um, I try not to talk because I can overtake things. So I try to just type quietly. <laughs> um, so when I started Sensi, I was in New Zealand as an immigrant. And so I should also say I'm introverted. I don't like to leave my house. And social media really wasn't a huge thing when I started in 2015. I mean, it was, but it wasn't like everything I learned, I learned in Sensi, basically. And so <clears throat> I learned a long time ago, because I've been in sales a long time in my life, that everywhere I go, I take the business card on the desk. Because I know at some point in my life, I'm going to be selling something because it's just my MO. <laughs> so I collect business cards wherever I go, and then I add them to an email list. So I don't know if you can do that anymore, but that's how I used to, or try to remember people's name was like, oh, she was the receptionist, or she was the nurse, or what was your name? Um, and so in both countries, so when I was in region three, I really didn't have a ton of friends. But I had worked, I'm a job gypsy. Gyp, yep, yeah, that's right. Um, and so I had a lot of jobs. So I just remembered people that I possibly worked with. And so um, we did a booking blitz my very first day in Sensi. And I didn't know what the hell that was. But within eight hours, I recruited my um, my neighbor because she, I just put something up on Facebook that said, I just joined Sensi. I had never smelt it, never tried it, never anything. But then we did this booking blitz together and I booked eight parties. And those eight parties took me through my first two and a half years in business. And it was because parties are the easiest, most efficient way to meet more people. But you book at them, you sell at them and you recruit at them. And then you don't have all this other time outside of a party that you have to worry about doing all these other things. So, um, so that's kind of what Anna said before is that's why you want to party is that they keep introducing you to more people. Then when I moved home, I haven't been home for 16 years. So I moved home and the January before I moved, I knew I had to be very intentional with all of my interactions on social media. So I started going to people's feeds that I don't see very often, but we're friends because if you're not seeing their stuff, they're not seeing your stuff. And I would maybe send them private messages and just start a normal conversation like, hey, how are you doing? I just saw you got a new dog or whatever. Just having the conversation. Nothing about Sensi, but I knew I had to start building that before I got back. Um, but when I got back, and I just have a new team member on here named Wendy, and I, I told her, like, it's great if you have that support of your friends and family that buy from you and support you, but don't expect it. I think it's a bonus if they do. I don't think it's the norm. Um, not in my experience anyway. Usually your friends and your family are the ones that are just waiting for you to fail or they're watching you to see if it's just a phase because I've done a lot of things. Um, or they, I give Sensi for Christmas every year now because I'm like, well, I don't see you all year and I try to reach out and you don't do anything. So I'm just giving you Sensi. So it helps me. Um, and they're just like, oh my God, so glad you, ju I, I just ran out. And my mom's like, you do know she has a business and she, you can reorder, but it's like pulling teeth with friends and family. It's way easier to make strangers, customers and friends than it is to take friends and family and make them into customers. Um, and so I've had to learn things. So one of the things I did when I moved back, I was like, I need to get out of the house and I have to meet people, but what do I do? I don't. I am allergic to children, so I'm not going near schools and things like that. Um, but wh where can I go? And so the meetup app is one where I went and looked for something. 
and um, I drive an hour to Milwaukee to color and coloring books for two hours and then drive home and go to Whole Foods because that's my closest Whole Foods. Um, but I brought samples for everybody and said, would you mind if I gave samples out to everybody that attended? And they had their dogs there. They were my people, definitely my people. Um, and she's like, you know what? We should do a scent night. She goes, I have about 800 contacts. I think we could do this with um with like a scent and like maybe singing bowls and maybe Reiki. And I'm like, okay, like did not expect that. Um, a business, I started working with businesses who buy gifts for their staff for Christmas. That was a huge order. They bought all, a regional person bought gifts for all the regional managers for hair swans. Um, then you have the builders that I work with. They're in Arkansas. They're not here, but a friend of mine works for them and she saw one caravan warmer and she showed the people at work. And now every month they basically order 10 warmers and 18 bars for me every month, but there's 400 and something locations. So right now I'm in the midst of trying to find a good letter to put together so I can approach all the other locations. <laughs> so it's just this little trying to do things. My mom's been really helpful because she's extroverted. She goes to happy hour every freaking day and she works outside the house and stuff. So, but it really does take you being uncomfortable. And I always say you need 15 seconds of courage. We were always taught by Jacqueline Roy that when someone hands you a receipt, you say, thank you so much. Here's something for you. And it's a sample. Um, we we're told to leave the house with three samples and you can't come back until you've given them all out. So drive through windows is usually because that's two is how you do that. So whatever it takes to get that that net wider is what you do. But try to follow your money. You go to doctor's appointments, you go to dentist, you get your hair done, you go to the gym. Are you making as much money where you go to these places by selling Sensi as you spend there? So that was always something that I always remember too. So I'm and my face is getting red because I'm like rambling. <laughs> no, that's no, awesome. it's so awesome. Patty. I mean, I'm, and Melissa's nodding at the same time. Like, yeah, yeah, yep, it is. Yep. It is. It's such. It's such good information, and it's right. It's true, and this is really what we've kind of been trying to urge everybody into with the high five challenge this month. With get and and you can see like we have not been as force feedy this month with high five challenge because the the premise really is simple it's have conversations it is having conversations it is having conversations patty you just said it's having conversations and i it's hate melissa loves people i am somebody that I don't like to ask people questions. I need the information there. I don't need you to, I don't want to come to have to ask you anything. So I do market different because I'm that person that I don't want to have to ask you and I don't want to see your PM. Just tell me what I need to know so I can order it. And so I'm somebody that doesn't enjoy the interaction and the questions, but I know I have to do it. So I'm like, okay, I put myself in the right brain and for an hour, I just dedicate my mom thinks I'm just on my phone and I'm like, nope, I'm building relationships. <laughs> no. Because you yeah. have to. Yeah. It it is. It's, it's just... not that I don't love them or or like them or whatever, but it's as an introvert, it's very draining. And to, to give all of you and be so like involved because I do care. But it's like, oh yes. And then being involved in that conversation and it takes a lot out of you if you're an introvert. So um but I, I schedule it and I know when I'm doing it and then I get off of Facebook again. Like I don't have notifications for Messenger on because I have to be in the right frame of mind to go in there and give of myself. Okay, so we are over on time and that's not at you, Patty. That is that is because you, you bring so much value. In fact, somebody dropped in the chat and said, can you do a seminar for introverts? So... Um, but, and we have questions that we didn't get to. And you're right, Kim, we didn't get to yours because onboarding is kind of a loaded question. It's not easily. Mm. Well, it's, it's hard because it's also, uh, it's something that doesn't reach everyone where meeting new people is something that, that is something everyone can, uh, use for sure. So is onboarding something that we could do as a bonus training or a, 
separate kind of deal. Absolutely. Or maybe we do it as a full night, but it is, it is a kind of a full on process. I'll answer you very, very quickly in an attempt to help feel, give you some confidence though in it. And that is one number one thing. When someone joins you, reach out, say, and ho say hello, encourage them to log into the workstation, complete the first things first checklist, and yep. then keep, keep with them for that first 14 day, first 15 days for that shooting star. After that, you're going to know what they need help with as far as what questions that they have or what, where they want to go next. It's just a matter of keeping in contact with people and giving them the resources that are already built with Sensi. You don't have to recreate the wheel. You don't have to tell them all of the things. What they need to know is in the first things first checklist. And so get them through that first 15 days and completing the, the shooting star award. If they've done that, they're off and running. Because that's just it. The onboarding is when it's getting them to log into their workstation because Sensi has an onboarding program for them. And so you want to not recreate the wheel and do something of your own that now overwhelms the person who's trying to follow the workstation. You want to piggyback on what the workstation is having them do. So all you are doing is catching up with them every day or checking in, saying, what part of the checklist or what part, what are you working on? So you, you don't want to overcomplicate by for, feeding them more stuff when you really want to direct them to what the workstation is guiding them to do. So, um, okay. We will take a look and see which other things that have come in, Anna, that, that we didn't get to. We will drop some answers to those in the, um, when um, we'll we'll figure out how we're going to drop answers maybe it continues into next week i don't know but but we'll take a look at the questions that we didn't get to tomorrow is virtual cubicle morning and evening those will be posted on the pages thursday night is thursday night shift the bonus training e that we offer each week um i believe that call this week is going to be a q and a as well um just so happens and then Rand, you have a Zoom prize giveaway for tonight, correct? Yes, I do. I mean, I mean, okay, hold on. Let me get you. Let me get you. Hold on. Let's make you big. Okay. All right. Here we go. Cassie Bosard. Oh, Cassie. Hey, Cassie. Did... Where is she? Was she? She was driving. Oh no, she's okay. Well, she's on the bottom. Well, she's in a different spot for you. She's at the bottom of my screen, but okay. she's here. Awesome. She's there. Yep. Hey, congratulations. Hey, send me your information, your address, and um, yeah, I'll get you your prize. Yay. Thank you, Rand. Yeah. Appreciate it. You guys, thank <laughs> you to everyone for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate you. We do this every Tuesday night, same time, same place. And we'll see some of you tomorrow. And if not, then we definitely will see you on our team pages. Have a great night, you guys.